Today Nick and I are grading an old blog post, the advantages of W3C compliance. We're going to build on the key points from our old post, starting by explaining who W3C are, what the W3C validator is, and ultimately what the benefits are for designers who conform to the standards. So W3C is the commonly used acronym for the World Wide Web Consortium. They're an international community of organisations and individuals who work together developing the standards that we use to create websites. Companies like Google, Apple, Yahoo, Microsoft, Adobe and Mozilla are just a handful of the hundreds of members of organisations who contribute to the evolving standards set out by the W3C. The W3C Markup Validation Service is a free public tool that is available online at validator.w3.org. Let's take a look. So there are three ways that you can validate the markup on your web pages. Um, you can add the URL of your website to the web address and check the page. You can upload a file from your computer and have that checked. Or you can simply uh, type or paste in markup that you wish to be validated. So the most popular method that uh, you'll probably want to use is the validate by URL. So let's just take a, a website, for example, like uh, Fenchurch Clothing, so fenchurch.com. And if we copy the address and paste that into the validator, so we want to validate the homepage of Fenchurch. So we'll check that. And unfortunately, this page has been returned with eight errors. So the site hasn't passed validation, hence the red bar and the warnings. But the great thing is about the validator, it doesn't just tell you that it fails, it, it uh, tells you what the errors are and also gives you information to help you diagnose and correct those problems. So the first error, as you can see here, is indicated as being on line 28 of the HTML, which is quite helpful. And it says that there's an end tag for a script which is not open. So you can see here there's a closed script. So it's suggesting that there isn't an open script tag, so perhaps this little bit of code could quite simply just be deleted. And as we make our way down the errors and warnings, you'll see here there's an ampersand that could possibly be uh, entered as a special character, uh, which is ampersand AMP semicolon, rather than just being entered like that. So that's how you correct that problem. And then there's uh, several errors here that are all the same, but just relate to different images. And that's the fact that the alt tag is missing, which is a uh, standard set out by W3C. that All images should have an alt tag. So there's really, uh, there's probably only a couple of minutes work that the guys at Fenchurch need to do to make their homepage W3C compliant. And the great thing about the validator, like I said, is it, it gives you uh, help and advice for making your page compliant. So let's try and find a page that is W3C compliant. So if we check our homepage, careerdesign.co.uk, so let's just go back to the validator homepage and we'll paste our website address in and check that. You'll see that our page is W3C compliant and we get the green banner and the pass result, which demonstrates what your, uh, your site will look like when it does pass validation. And it's also important to bear in mind that this isn't validating the entire website, it's only validating the home page. If I wanted to test a page um, that's not, that, you know, if I want to test a different page of the home page, you simply have to copy and paste the URL of the page that you want to check. So you have to check it page by page. Now, if your page is valid, what a lot of uh, webmasters like to do is to embed the W3C valid icon. Now, the HTML here that you can copy and paste once your site is valid can simply be put straight onto the uh, onto your web pages. Most webmasters tend to put it in the footer. And if you don't want to include their icon, you could literally just use the little link that they give you and link up some text that perhaps might say W3C compliant code, a little bit like what we've done in the footer of our website. You'll see that we've just linked the word W3C compliant HTML. And if you click that, it validates the page. So this code that they give you, essentially it allows um, you to show off the fact that your page is W3C compliant. And when users click on that button, it will validate the page just to double check that. So you can see a site here called uh, iBasivis, and they've chosen to embed the W3C icon onto their page to indicate to uh, website users that the page is W3C compliant. So that code, when you paste it onto your website, when you click it, it will take you to the validator and validate the page that you've just come from. So if we click this link here, and you'll notice, unfortunately, that the page has been validated, but it isn't actually valid. At the moment, there are four small errors. So what's probably happened in this situation is that the webmasters uh, passed their homepage to standard, embedded the uh, the icon and the link, and unfortunately since then they've probably adjusted their homepage and introduced new errors which they haven't recently checked. So if you do choose to include these icons um, on your website 
and uh, you know show off the fact that your page is OW3C compliant, it's important to make sure that you check the the uh, validation of them on a regular basis to ensure that uh, the you know if, if your clients or customers do click on those links, the page does indeed validate. So now that we know who W3C are and what their popular markup validator is, we can ask the question, what are the benefits of making my web pages W3C compliant? The first benefit is SEO. Standard compliant content is easily crawled and cached by your search engine bots. If your pages are made up of substandard markup, then you run the risk of bots abandoning pages before crawling and caching them correctly. The second benefit is increased stability and usability of your web pages. Making your pages compliant won't guarantee they'll look exactly the same in all browsers, but it will reduce the factors that can contribute. And finally, and possibly most importantly, is professionalism. The W3C and their markup validation tool exist for a reason, to push, evolve, and improve the quality of the web. If, as a designer, you embrace and conform to the standards, then you can expect to shorten your development time and create SEO-friendly websites that are in a uniform markup that is easily recognisable to all in the industry. Despite building on our previous blog posts, we're only scratching the surface of W3C compliance and the benefits that come with it. It would be great to get a dialogue going on the subject, so please leave your comments on our supporting blog post at createdesign.co.uk forward slash blog forward slash videos.